welcome to Sherwood Park Alliance Church. Whether you're joining us here in the room or you're watching online, uh, we're so glad that you chose to spend a little bit of your weekend here in this way. Over the next hour, we're going to be spending some time in worship together before hearing a message from Pastor Rita. If giving is a way that you choose to worship, you can do so by going to the kiosks in the atrium um, or by going to spac.ca slash give as well. And just a huge thank you to everyone who makes giving a part of your worship. It is honestly because of your generosity that this church is just able to fund so many different areas of ministry. If you would like prayer, there's going to be a number on the screen, and you can text this number, and a member from our prayer team would be happy to reach out to you and be happy to pray for you. Um, every, every Tuesday and Wednesday, this space is full of teenagers. And I know some of you are like, that sounds awesome. Some of you are like, that sounds terrible. I'm going to avoid this place Tuesday, Wednesdays. But it's a lot of fun. I think it's awesome. Um, and it, that's because these nights is when we do our junior and our senior high youth programs. And this last week at youth, we were playing this game. And the main point of this game was just to get to know someone new. Because we realized that although there's a lot of youth who come here week after week and see the same people, there's still a lot who don't know each other and who have never gotten the chance to meet each other. And I was thinking, and I think that the same is true here on Saturdays and Sundays as well. I think there's a lot of us who probably see the same people week after week, and we don't even know their name. We've never even gotten the chance to meet them. So this morning, I have a challenge for us. It's just going to be a few minutes, but my challenge is to look for one person that you've never met before. Maybe these people or this person is sitting right beside you. Maybe they're sitting on the opposite side of the room, but just look for one person that you haven't had the chance to meet before. And this is all you got to do. You got to get to know their name and you got to get to know one thing about them. Maybe this one thing is what they're doing for the long weekend. Maybe it's what they do for work, what they do for fun, whatever it is. Get to know one new person, their name, and one thing about them. Um, and we'll do that just for a few moments here, and then the band will bring us back when the time is up. So you can do that now. Hope you got to meet someone new here this morning. Um, I'll just bring us all kind of back to where we were sitting before. Um, but this is so awesome. Thank you for leading us that, wherever you are, Luke. That was a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, so as we're kind of coming back into this space, um, I just, we're going to go into this song called Holy Spirit. And 
sometimes I think when we sing this song, it's kind of hard to just like, we're singing, we're inviting the Holy Spirit into this place. Um, and it's kind of like, why are we doing that? Because we already know that he's here. But this is just an invitation for him to be present with us. And kind of not just in our own lives and in our own selves, but as a congregation, we're just inviting him. We're doing this corporate invitation to bring him here into this space. So why don't you stand with us and we'll continue to sing um, and we'll just invite him into this space.
welcome you to be here with us for this service, God. And, and we just open our hearts to you, that we would just feel you and we would let you in. So we just lift up the rest of this service to you. In your name we pray. Amen. You can take a seat for a couple minutes. So the next song that we're going to be singing is actually called Goodness of God. Pastor Rita is going to be talking about listening prayer in her sermon later. And so when I was considering songs to sing this weekend, um, my thoughts immediately went to the second verse of this song. The lyrics go like this. I love your voice, for you have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, you were close like no other. The words in this verse hold a lot of meaning to me. The older I get, the more I can see how God has been faithful even on my darkest nights, the most painful moments of my life that I can look back on. But I also recognize that in order to, feel, to hear his voice and feel his presence in those moments, I had to be willing to invite him in to those circumstances. I read a beautiful devotion recently by Kayla Ferris. She's an author for Proverbs 31 Ministries. And one sentence in that devotional really stood out to me. It said, we can deliberately recall the goodness of God in our past and proclaim it for our future. There's so much truth wrapped up in that one little sentence. And it's strange because some of the moments that I thought that I would never want to look back on later in my life, well, those are the moments where I very deliberately look back on them now when I'm going through something hard. Because even though there's pain attached to those memories, they remind me that God was faithful to me and that he will continue to be faithful to me through whatever I'm going through in the future or just even in the present right now. I just need to surrender to him. So church, I'd love for us to take a moment just of quiet, of stillness before we continue to sing together to deliberately recall the goodness of God in our own lives and then proclaim that for our, for our present and our future. So first, we're gonna just take a few moments where you can just sit in some quiet and reflect on the times that God has moved in your life. Maybe even a specific time that he led you through the fire like we're gonna sing about. So just spend a couple moments in prayer thanking God for what he's already done for you. So next, I know many of you are going through the fire right now, and I'm so sorry if this week's been a hard one for you. I don't know what your circumstances are coming into this building. Maybe you're having a great day. Maybe it's been terrible. Um, and if it has been a bad one, there's so many of us that would love to pray with you after the service. But I just invite you to consider where you are at right now, what obstacles, struggles, or worries you might be facing and just spend a couple moments of quiet prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit in like we just did to guide you through whatever it is. And if you feel comfortable, maybe just listen and see if there's anything that he wants to say to you.
don't you stand with us if you're able as we continue to worship. Darkness now has ended in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of light. 
forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life you reign you reign above it all you reign above it all over the universe and over every art there is no higher name jesus you reign above it all on the cross the work was finished God, you poured out your life just to give us new life. The from the lips of the forgiven, you and nothing more. Cause Jesus, you're.
just surrender it all to you, God. Just like we sang about, you're so much bigger, so much greater. You reign above everything, God. And, and I just pray that as we go into whatever circumstances we're in right now, that we would be able to, do, to just think about the things that you've already done and that we would just remember that you reign above everything. So we lift up the rest of this service to you. Um, we are going to be listening listening to you, and so I just pray that you would give, a, give us some ears to listen here, God. And so um, we just thank you for this time of worship together. And in your name we pray, amen. You can take a seat. And at this time, if there's any kids in the room in grade three to six, um, it's so great that you're in here worshiping with us and just thank you for being here. But you can head back and find your teachers and go and enjoy your classes. It is so good to be together this morning, and I'm excited to continue our series on prayer, um, this sacred practice that we are invited into, and our hope is that in this series, you'll not only receive what we have on the weekends, but that you'll dive into it yourself. And we've uh, put together and curated some resources. Laurie helped us with that, and we're so grateful. You can find that on spac.ca backslash prayer. And I just brought up some of the books with me that are listed there. You can actually find these in our coffee shop, Legato. Um, they're for sale, and if we run out, you can order them. Um, excellent books on this topic, and I recommend them to you. Before we dive into some new content today, um, I want to actually have us stop and do something we've already done several times in the service, and that is to pray again. And we're gonna pray, well, we've been learning the last two weeks about this thing of prayer as asking God for what we need. And so we're gonna do that. Right now, we're going to stop and we're gonna pray for our elders. Um, hi, elders. They're joining us right now online. Uh, they're out at uh, Camp Van Ness. Each year, our elders take a weekend to pause, to come together, to just listen to the voice of God as the leaders that God has raised up in our church family, um, and to hear where he wants to take us in the next ministry year. And so we're going to stop. Will you pray with me? If prayer is something new for you or something you're not quite sure about, I invite you to listen in to this conversation. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your body, the church. Thank you that you are the head of the church. Thank you this morning that you give gifts to members of your family. Thank you for our elders. Thank you, God, that you have raised them up. And thank you for their willingness to serve in this way. And we ask in a very unique way that you will continue on this weekend set aside to hear your voice. You would, in a unique way, confirm the things that you are wanting them to hear as they lead us. So thank you, God, uh, that you are with them. We pray this uh, in the powerful name of Jesus, who knows everything that is head of, ahead of us as a church family. You know that we are begun this process of succession planning for a new lead pastor. And so we're specifically asking God for great wisdom in that. Thank you that you care, that you hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to pray about something else, and it's that next weekend is a baptism service, and we are excited about it. And a few uh, months ago, I had the privilege of baptizing somebody named Deanna. And um, Deanna had made this decision to follow Jesus. Actually, the words that she used were, I need a fresh start. And I want it to be a start where I follow Jesus. And then she made this decision. She felt the nudge of God's spirit to take the step of baptism. And we did that. And on this coming weekend, about 21 more people are going to be taking that step. Maybe this morning, God is nudging you. And you haven't said yes 
yet. I want to pray for you. Maybe you know someone else that you think God is nudging. Let's pray together right now for them as well. Heavenly Father, thank you for this coming weekend and what you're going to do in our church family. It's always a time of celebration when we get to together just witness and celebrate with those who are publicly saying, I've chosen to follow Jesus. So for every one of them that has already said yes, would this just be a week of anticipation and preparation as they are just come to this marker moment in their journey? And Father, right now I pray too, if there are others that you have been nudging, that you would give them whatever it is they need in order to say yes and to join that group. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if that was you, um, over here, right after the service, Pastor James is going to be in the fireside room, and he would love to connect with you, answer any questions, and add your name to that list for next weekend. All right. Week one, Pastor Greg started us off, and uh, he said it was kind of the basics of prayer that he started us with, maybe prayer 101. Well, this morning, what we're going to do, we're going to dive in a little deeper. We're going to do something, maybe prayer 301, um, and we've already heard it. We're talking today about this thing of listening to the voice of God. And I would love to say to you that I am going to just completely demystify this, but the truth is, it is a mystery, a beautiful mystery that is a reality, just as real as anything that you see around us, but not material. And so it takes faith. Every part of our Christian journey is a journey of faith. Hebrews says it this way. Hebrews 11:6 6 says to us, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And although this thing of listening prayer requires faith, it's not some kind of weird woo-woo thing at all. This is the normal Christian life. Hearing God is the normal Christian life. Let me just tell you before we dive in on some of that, some other things that hearing God is not, because these are really important. Hearing God is not a way to get a pass to get a pass on being responsible for our lives. God has given us agency, and he takes us through the normal process of growing, growing in wisdom, growing in knowledge. I don't know about you, sometimes I've just been like, I'm lazy. I just want to, God to give me a written note to say, this is, you know, this is it. Um, that's not what it is. It is not a pass for being responsible. Another thing it is not is it is not a pass on the regular hardships of life. And let me make sure this is really clear to you as well. If you're someone who has sought to hear God's voice and something didn't turn out, it does not mean that you misheard. It's not necessarily that you misheard. We see that in scripture. The apostle Paul, we, we, we remember that he was warned by the Holy Spirit that hard things were coming. He heard right. It was hard things. Hearing God is not a pass on hardship. Hearing God is not something about kind of a scorecard that God may be keeping where it's kind of like, I wonder if she'll get this one right. That's not it at all. And I have seen people, and I hate seeing this because I know what it's like. I've done it. I've seen people where they are so scared because they believe they're going to miss what God wants to say to them. They're going to get it wrong. And that maybe then God would be displeased with them. If that's your view of God, I invite you, if you didn't hear the last two sermons, to go back and listen again. Because both Brody and Greg reminded us that is not the kind of God that we come to in prayer. He does not toy with us in those kinds of ways. He is a good, good father. In prayer, God wants to share life with us. He wants to assure us of his presence. He wants to lead us in good and godly ways. I love this definition that the heart of prayer is a conversational relationship with God. It is talking and it is listening. Not a monologue, but a dialogue, a divine dialogue. So I'm not sure what you would say this morning 
if I was able to come to you individually and just ask, so do you believe you've ever heard the voice of God? This morning, I want to convince you that you have heard it. You definitely have. And for most of us in the room, you've actually heard it in a very personal way. The question this morning for all of us, I don't believe is, is God speaking? The question really is, are we listening? And do we know what God's voice sounds like? We can all learn to be better listeners, and I'm so grateful for that. That's one of my big prayers in my life. All right, we're going to dive in to John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, and skipping to 27. Um, in this passage, Jesus is the one talking, and he's describing himself as a good shepherd, as a gate for sheep. He's describing us as sheep. So just listen, listen as I read, and remember that the Holy Spirit is with us right now to help us hear what he wants us to hear through his word. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Skipping to verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I spoke on this text back in 2021, and at that time, I spent a lot of time going over this thing of sheep and shepherds and sheepfolds and things like that, um, and it's important in this passage. Um, you can investigate that. You can find that sermon or something else just to help you understanding more of that. It's not really our daily experience, but for today, I actually am going to keep my focus on this thing of the listening. This thing of a shepherd who talks to us and us as sheep who can listen. Let's just go back again and just pull out a few of these verses that say that so clearly. Let's go back to verse 3. The sheep, that's you and I, recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 4, they will follow him because, because they know his voice. All who came before, in verse 8, all who came before me were thieves and robbers, Jesus said, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So God speaks, but how does he speak? How does he speak? Is it that big booming voice like Morgan Freeman? Um, I've actually never heard God speak to me like that, although it sounds wonderful. Um, but here's what scripture actually teaches us. Scripture teaches us that God speaks in many ways. And often God's speaking is talked to us about through this word revelation that God reveals himself to us. When we talk, we're revealing things about ourselves to other people, aren't we? And so God reveals himself to us. And often these revelations are split into two categories. 
There's general revelation and there's special revelation. So let me explain that. First of all, general revelation, the way that God lets everyone on the planet know things about him is through his creation. Psalm 19 says this really clearly. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hands. So when you woke up this morning, if you saw the sunrise like I did, God was speaking to us through that. He was telling us things about what he's like. This weekend, my husband is away. He's at a carving course. And uh, if you were to see one of his carvings, you would know something about him. And you might even think, interesting, I'd kind of like to know and meet the person that carved it. But you would know a few things about him. God is speaking to everyone through creation. So hence, we have all heard his voice, whether we recognized it as him or not. I recently heard of a woman who said, when I looked into the eyes of my newborn baby, I felt more love than could ever be explained by evolution alone. Hmm. She was hearing, she was hearing that voice calling her that there's something more, something more. God uses creation as a doorway to a more intimate and personal revelation of himself, the things that he wants us to know, and we call these special revelation. So there's lots of them. But one of the first ones I want to just point out, this is special revelation to us. God gave us this book, the Bible. We already listened this morning, and we already asked that the Holy Spirit would help us here. This is an incredibly precious book that helps us know God, understand his ways, understand how he intended life to be. Some of the other ways he speaks, he speaks through other believers in the body of Christ to us. I've heard God's voice that way many times. Sometimes he speaks through angels. We saw that in the Christmas story. I don't think I've ever experienced that. Um, he speaks through our circumstances. Actually, if we're listening, God can speak through anything. Do you remember uh, a couple of the other stories in scripture? God once spoke to a man through a donkey. Um, in our last series, we saw God speak to a man out of a burning bush. Um, God speaks in all kinds of ways. I remember one time sitting uh, in a coffee shop by myself. I was very discouraged. It was a confusing, hard season of life. And I really wanted to hear God. I felt like I needed to hear from him. The music was playing um, in the coffee shop, and I remember just thinking, oh, I just wish that could be turned down so I could hear better. But it was like right then I heard a still small voice that said to me, just listen. And I did. I stopped, and I listened. And do you know what the lyric of the song was? The lyric of the song was, Every little thing is going to be all right. It was the voice of God to me through just a song that was being played in a coffee shop. It was what I needed to hear from him. It didn't change my circumstances. I didn't have an answer to a lot of my questions and confusion. But I instantly, I instantly had the tightness in my chest, my shoulders went down, uh, that tightness was gone because God met me in that moment in a very real way. Actually, that's one of the most common ways that God speaks to us. It's through what we refer to as the still small voice of his Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's called a whisper. Sometimes you hear it called a nudge. We, we used that when I spoke about baptism earlier. Or maybe God is nudging you. That would be his voice. But this still, small, subtle voice that we hear. All right. So those are some of the ways. So we've said already here that 
all of us have heard his voice through creation, all of us, whether we recognize it or not. But I also said that most of us have heard it personally. And if you're not sure that you have, let me, let me take us back to verse 3. Okay, back to verse 3. It says, the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name. All right. The only way that you can become a Christian, a follower of Jesus, is that in some way you hear his voice calling and you respond. Somehow you know it's me, it's me, Deanna knew it. It's me that he's calling. It's not my neighbor here, or it's, it's me. There's something personal about it. And you step forward and you say yes. I want to follow you, Jesus. Yes, I want to receive your invitation to life, your forgiveness, all of those things. But that was the voice of God in your life when you said yes. That counts. Let that sink in. If you wonder if you've ever heard his voice, that counts. But that is just the beginning. He wants to continue the conversation throughout our whole lives. Remember, the heart of prayer is a conversational relationship with God, talking and listening. And I know that many of you, many of you are wanting to hear the voice of God on different things. Just last weekend, actually, after this service, four different people, actually in different ways, told me things they are wanting to hear God about. One was going into retirement and said, I just want to know how God wants me to serve in this season. Another was, I'm thinking about a, a pretty big significant change in my life. Um, I, I feel like God's nudging me to do something different in my career. Another person was needing God's wisdom with a really, really tricky relationship problem. And on it went. Hearing God's voice, needing his wisdom. So how do we know when that inner nudge, that still small voice, is not just our own thoughts, or worse yet, as we have saw in the passage, maybe the voice of someone that would lead us astray and harm us? There are many excellent books. Um, one of them is right here, um, How to Hear God. <laughs> But um, there's many excellent books written. Um, there are many messages you can hear. But if you consolidate them and you consolidate what we learn in Scripture from people hearing God's voice, um, I'm going to give you four quickly. But then I want to go and take you a couple other places before we're done here. So when you are thinking, God, is this you talking to me? Um, you can ask these questions. Number one. Does what I think God is saying to me align with Scripture? In other words, if there's something that we have learned in this book about God, about the way he works, about he, what he wants for our lives, and we are hearing something very different, if we're hearing a voice saying, you need to get revenge on that guy, that is not the voice of God because we know that God has told us that's not how we are to live. So first of all, does it align with Scripture? Secondly, is it affirmed by other believers? We really need each other in this process. We can kind of go off on funny tracks sometimes, and we need to come to each other in our life groups or in personal friendships and relationships and say, you know, I'm really, there's something I'm, I'm wanting to hear God on. Does this, does this make sense? Do you think he would say this to me? Um, next, is God affirming it through circumstances in your life? And lastly, do you have that inner assurance and peace that maybe this is God? These are excellent questions to use. And if you haven't begun using some tools like this, I really encourage you to. But now with the rest of our time, I want to point you to three things that kind of build on this but maybe say, uh, uh, um, maybe in just a little different way, how we can hear God's voice. I want to talk about attention, content, and tone. These are three things that have been really important to me in this journey as I seek to better hear God. This first one may be obvious, attention, but it is not, it's not easy. 
Um, If we want to hear God's voice, just like in any human relationship, we have to pay attention to him. Have you ever been with someone where you felt invisible? Maybe even you were talking and you just knew, like, they are not listening. They're not listening. We can be like that with God. We want to keep learning to give him our attention. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. You will seek me, and this is God speaking. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God wants to be known by us. He wants to reveal himself to us. But we have a crucial role to play. If we are distracted and more interested in other voices, yeah, we're not likely going to hear him. David Brooks is one of America's leading writers and commentator. He's an op-ed columnist for the New York Times and a writer for The Atlantic. And his most recent book is How to Know a Person, The Art of Seeing Others and Being Deeply Seen. It's a really good book. (laughs) He says, when we want to know another person, we need to have an explorer's heart. I love that. (laughs) Do you have an explorer's heart when it comes to your relationship with God? An explorer's heart longs passionately and intently to hear the other person. One of God's biggest complaints in scripture about his people is that they are not listening. I've got to admit, Many times in prayer, I'm not listening. I'm asking, I'm pleading, I'm bargaining. Brooks goes on to say, many people are unable to step outside their own point of view. They simply are not curious about the other. Are you curious about God? Are you curious about his perspective on things? What if one of the ways that you could better learn to hear God's voice was by learning to ask really good questions? These questions probably should first and foremost not only be about you and your own situation, but about him, about what he thinks, about what he feels, about what is important to him. Brooks says, humble questions are open-ended. They're encouraging the other person to take control and take the conversation where they want it to go. In prayer, do you ever ask God, God, where do you want this conversation to go? It takes a great deal of humility. But if we really believe that God is there and that he wants to be known by us, it is worth the energy of having an explorer's heart and having a humble posture when we come to him. Psalm 25 says this, and it's incredible. It blows my mind every time. The Lord confides. The Lord confides. The Lord tells his secrets. The Lord says what's on his heart to those who fear him. Again, this posture of humility. I have a friend who says, I'm trying to learn to say that my heart is preset to yes. She knows what it means to fear God. She is coming to God and not saying, God, will you do this for me? Do you do that for me? Will you do that? She's coming and saying, God, what do you want? And not that we don't ask. We do. We do. He's invited us to. But what about the listening part? 
As we get to know God, we're going to gain confidence in discerning the kinds of things that God would say. The kinds of things. And this leads me to the next point about discerning God's voice. Just very briefly here to touch on, it is to this thing of the content of what we heard. And I want to just give you one more tool for that. Because the question that has come to mean probably the most to me in this process recently is, does it sound like something Jesus would say? Is what I'm hearing, does it sound like something Jesus would say? Listen to Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 3. Long ago, God spoke to us many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. Now, in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. The son is the exact radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being. If you want to get to know God and what God sounds like, get to know Jesus. Dive into the gospels, just like we're doing this morning. You know, in the gospel this morning, we heard different things that Jesus said in the Gospel of John. One of them that we heard was that his purpose for us is that we have a rich and a satisfying life. Now, if we just hear those words and we don't think deeply about them, uh, we may think God's talking about like, well, you know what, just the American dream. Actually, for many of us these days, we're realizing the American dream isn't working. Um, depression, loneliness, all of those things are actually on the rise as the American dream and materialism and consumerism has been pursued. If we really listen to Jesus there, we will hear that anything he says to us will lead us on a path towards real life, towards meaningful life, right in the middle of the hard realities. Let me tell you um, about a lady. Um, Actually, this coming Tuesday, there's going to be a funeral that's going to happen right here. And um, it's funeral, a funeral for a lady that led a rich and satisfying life. She was a follower of Jesus. And I remember so clearly when we came to this church 27 years ago, and I saw her for the first time. She was up on this platform in the choir, and she had on a big floppy hat, and her face literally was radiant. And she was sitting in her wheelchair. I never saw Iris except in her wheelchair because that was her life. But she had learned to hear the voice of the shepherd that said to her, you are deeply loved. You are seen. You are known. Your life matters. I care about you. And she had allowed that truth and that voice to penetrate her so that what came out of her was this radiance. And it doesn't mean it wasn't hard. Iris prayed many times prayers of lament and of calling out to God. But she had this knowledge that the good shepherd was with her and had led her on good paths. Just before we wrap up, I want to talk about one more thing, and that is God's tone of voice. We all know that tone is so important in communication. I could say to all of you, I love you. And you would receive those words, I hope, as a statement of truth and affection. Or I could say to you, I love you? It would be totally different, wouldn't it? The exact same three words, but a different tone. I think the enemy often uses tone, and he twists what God says to us by saying it in a different tone. So let me just give you this last tool. All right, we're going to just put up a little contrast here of God's voice, the tone of voice we can expect if it's his voice, and the enemy's voice, or maybe a voice in our head, all right? So if it is God's voice, and we learn these things from the full tenor of Scripture, if it is God's voice, it will still you, kind of like a weighted blanket, maybe. 
It has authority. If it's the enemy's voice, it will rush you and push you and frenzy you. If it is God's voice, it will lead you. If it's the enemy's voice, it will push you and bully you and seek to dominate you. If it is God's voice, it will enlighten you. The enemy's voice will confuse you. God's voice reassures you. The enemy's voice frightens. This is one of his major tactics, is using fear in our lives. God's voice encourages you. The enemy discourages. God's voice comforts. The enemy brings more worry. God's voice convicts. So important to understand. There are times you will hear a, first, a fierce and firm voice saying, stop that. That is hurting you and everyone around you. That is the voice of God. That is a voice of love because the Holy Spirit is seeking to convict you and help you in your journey. But that's very different than the enemy's voice that will condemn you. It will be a condemning voice that says, you're a write-off and you don't matter. God's voice will bring healing into your life. The enemy's voice will continue to harass. I hope that's helpful this morning. Kaylee's going to come and um, sing one more song for us. And, and as she does that, it's specifically about this thing of listening to God, of being ready to hear, to obey. Maybe as you listen right now, what could be really helpful is if you would begin to formulate a question that you have for God. And maybe when you go home, you could even write that question down. You could say, God, what do you think about? Or God, what's your perspective on? And then maybe you could listen. But I don't mean listen for like 30 seconds and kind of feel like, ah, you got nothing. And, and, and forget that. I mean listen. I mean listen all week. Maybe listen all month. Keep coming back to your question and noticing, oh, maybe that was God speaking through that brother. Oh, maybe that was God speaking through that song. Maybe that was God answering me through this. Because he is always speaking. We just need to be listening and to be discerning the good voice of the good shepherd who will lead us into life that is truly life. And trusting in what's sinking, these boats weren't made for me. I'm done drifting on the water of insecurity. In the noise and the distractions, in the storms of arguing, I hear your voice call.
thank you for coming here today, church. Um, so glad to see all your faces. Um, and I just pray my prayer for you this week is that you would just be able to hear God's voice just in whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so thank you again for being here, and we'll see you next week.